Hey, everyone, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo, uh, Annabelle has come home, perhaps you've heard. Uh, mm-hmm. The third in the um, Creepy Doll uh, series in the, what, ninth? But she's part of the Conjuring. Conjuring movie. It's there's a bunch of them now. I don't even know. So uh, you want to tackle this? I'll one? do it. Fine. So I went and saw this by myself at the Regal Theater in Rolling Hills, where I was like the only person for a long time, and all the seats reclined. They're all very cushy, so I was very comfortable to be tense and scared. <laughs> um, Nick, stop looking at me. You don't want to hear about Annabelle. I know you're scared of the idea of the doll. My kid's like watching me do this. <laughs> anyway, so um, at the beginning, we, we see how it is that Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson get the Annabelle doll. We see them recognize how deeply inherently evil it is. We see them put Annabelle into a glass case, which then gets blessed by a Catholic priest, along with all the other stuff in the creepy room full of creepy stuff. I, I yes, love that ma'am. this... One of the things that never ceases to amuse me about, and I know that they did this in real life, and there's you know differing opinions. Uh, I'm on the more uh, skeptical side of whether or not stuff is really possessed and evil, but I love the whole (laughs) idea of like, this is the most evil doll in the world, and it's got terrible power. Let's take it home (laughs) and put it in the room with all the other scary stuff. (laughs) Well, it's a very safe room. There's lots lots of deadbolts. It's going to be okay. Yeah, but like, (laughs) but in uh, but in movies like this, Catholicism is always a superpower. Right, you know, like, like, like if they, oh, it totally is. If they did magic spells and runes, whatever, you might not buy it. But boy, trot a priest out with some holy water and some Latin, and like, oh yes, of course, that's going to keep the devil at yes. bay. Well, I mean, Vera Farmiga even says the evil has been contained. <laughs> And yeah. there's even a crawl at the beginning that says that like the the room contains so much evil that they have to have it blessed every week. Every week, fifty two times. But here's a year. the thing: like amongst the issues, I mean, look, I like this movie. It's super scary. Granted, you know, I'm did my usual thing for a schlocky horror movie, went in with three or four cocktails. <laughs> and it made three this or movie. four? Do you remember it? Oof. Yes. Makes this movie amazing. Uh, <laughs> but, I... like, you're going to lock that up in a, in a little glass case? and With a little tiny key? A little tiny key? But it's chapel why, glass. But why would you, <laughs> right, but why would you keep the key? Why not destroy the doll? Well, well but, they say that at the beginning. Oh, right, but throw the key away. That the would make it work. The vessel. whole phrase. Lock it up right. and throw away the key. So like, anyway... <laughs> So so okay so um the they have a daughter Welcome played by McKenna Grace yes. and uh, and Madison Eisman who is in Ghost and uh, not Ghostbusters Goosebumps um, and Jumanji is her babysitter and has to watch her overnight and her best friend so so she's a good girl a good wholesome high school girl but her best friend comes over who is not such a good girl who is very mischievous and wants to snoop around through all the evil possessed things and unleashes all holy hell and McKenna Grace was in Gifted wasn't she she's also young Tanya Harding and I Tanya she is oh, right. yes. So yeah, and, then, very good. and Katie Sarif plays Daniela, the friend yes. of the babysitter. And the three of them are really good in yeah. this movie. Like the three lead actresses are giving performances far beyond what this movie really merits. Because it is ultimately a haunted house movie. Because basically the babysitter's friend's dad died. She feels guilty about it because she was driving the car, even though it wasn't her fault. And so what does she do? <laughs> Goes in the room and like plays with everything. Lets the doll out of the cabinet. And touches the piano and the typewriter and the wedding dress and the thing and so of course they all come into the house and terrorize everybody she finds the history eraser button she presses that (laughs) it kind of reminds me of of the first Goosebumps movie in that regard in that like every book opens up and all the evil stories and all the evil characters come out true kind of yeah but um they give her a lot more shading and complexity, the best friend, than, yes, than she not, would get in an ordinary true. film because she's not just an idiot. mischievous. She's not right. just a mean girl. There's a whole backstory which completely you know, makes her reasoning understandable. Yes. You're a 16-year-old girl. Of course you're going to want to go back and reconnect with your dad and this makes sense right. to her. I mean, yeah. one of the things, this movie, unlike a lot of horror movies that and, and movies in general, this movie... Maybe not a lot, but this movie does the notable feat in that it respects its characters, especially the one that like causes all the trouble, right? Because it's not just that, you know, she's 16. Like it gives her, like she gets herself into that house specifically because of what she thinks she might be able to do mm, regarding yeah. the loss of her father. And get some closure. And, and as much as we can look at that and be like, okay, it's different than your average, you know, in a lot of movies that just be like, Oh, hey, let's see what this is. Oh, hey, let's read the Necronomicon. Uh, yeah. This will be fun, <laughs> right? Like this one's actually... They give her some they, background. They ah. give her some background and she's got legit motivation that they also stick with 
yes. for the rest of the movie, right? Yeah, no, and no, it's no. a it's a it's a part of her character, and they actually make her kind of a grounded, it, real character. In in what we were saying about the Spider Man movie, where like you almost kind of wish they would put the superhero stuff on the shelf and just let it be about the teens because they're so interesting. I would have been much more interested to see a movie about like the young girl and how like her, her friends shun her because everybody thinks her parents are doing weird spooky shit. Mm -hmm. And this girl who's dealing with the death of her father. And you know, I, I was more interested in that than I was in all the, well, you know. the movie Having about the girl dealing with the grief of losing her parents this week is Midsummer. Midsummer, yeah. Oh, well, That's yeah, the there extreme you go. version. That's we have true. that. But yeah, McKenna Grace is really good and there's great subtlety to her. Yeah. And, uh, and she is, she can also see dead people. And, mm. and you see the toll that takes on her as a kid. You know, the power is not cool. Right. She, she's She'd burdened. Rather not. She's burdened by it at an age. Uh, she's like a tween. Like, it's, it's an awful age anyway. Yeah. Plus, she can see dead people. There's a <laughs> hunky high school boy played by an actor named Michael Cimino. I thought that was so funny. I'm not like, the director of Heaven's Gate. Um, <laughs> who... It kind of pops up conveniently in the in the story as it goes along. Like like there are parts where he's hiding from a horrible thing, but then suddenly he's there at exactly the right moment. It's like, wait, you were hiding. Why are you now here? Like the movie just sort of throws him in where they need him. You right. Know? And his nickname, it's like, did they pull his nickname out of some script for some other dumb teen uh, movie? Yeah. Well, it is kind of like a, a really spooky version of Adventures in Babysitting, right? <laughs> it's like a really haunted, <laughs> evil version. So this is version. Nightmares in Babysitting. <laughs> it is. I like it. It is. I mean, because, you know, anything can go wrong when your parents are at town. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually does. So yeah, no, th it's fun. It's there are legitimately tense moments here. Um, I was thinking about weird science actually, like where, like everything was going to undo itself at the end of the movie. Either know? it's a John Hughes movie, <laughs> but kinda. like with a, with a creepy doll. Uh, but again, and, not to and, keep and, going back to the silliness of the room, but you know, like this is a movie that <laughs> for the most part is consistent in the rules it sets out. But when you start thinking about it, like one of the things I was thinking later is like, okay, if you're the Warrens, like. Do you not know what teenagers are capable of? Like, why would you leave the house? Or why, or why or like, not take the keys with right. you? you or know? like, find an adult. Right. Have an adult stay at the house. Like, I, ask the oh, priest to stay. speaking mm -hmm. of the house. Oh, yeah, ask the priest to stay. I love, <laughs> I love the art direction of this movie. Yeah. The house in this movie, like the house in Curse of La Llorona, mm -hmm. which was oh, yeah. fairly, eh, but the houses, like, are so period specific right. like this yeah. movie has shag carpeting and like the yellow opaque patterned glass right i think it's set in the 80s but no no this is set it's the, definitely the, the 70s. early 70s like they're, they're, they're playing oh, bad finger right. on the on the record right. yeah in the, in the newspaper there's a mention right. of ron ziegler right. you're right it's <laughs> it's set in the early 70s but the decor is like some of it's you know even period from like the 60s like yes. it's that you know the stuff that would be in a house yeah. that had been in like it's very lived in and it feels like the kind of house you'd go to your parents house your friend's parents be like oh this is a nice house <laughs> yeah it's like one of the it's like it, like you're on swing town all of a sudden in this it's thing. a it's split great. level house with yeah. shag yeah. carpeting and it makes sense architecturally Yes. It does. Right? Yes, but, but like if you're following where the hallways are and where the no. bedrooms are in relation to like the front yard and up, up on top of each other. And I yes. love that there's a possessed board game that escapes from the room. Although sadly, uh -huh. it's not a real board game. I looked it up. Oh. Um, but it, but I just just conceptually, I love that idea. Yeah. And, and that's one of the cool little details because you know when they open that board game, you know what it's going to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I yeah. mean, I want someone to make that game. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I, I'm surprised that they haven't sent them out to, to you know, <laughs> critics as as swag. Oh, they should have. Warner Brothers, you missed a, an opportunity here. We all want a feely wheelie game. It's fun. It's scary. Yeah, it's <laughs> it is. It, I, I think it's. I think Bibbs may have coined this. It falls squarely in the category of slumber party horror movie. Like it's not that scary and it's not that great, but it is effective. And yeah, it, it, you know the, the the again the performances are really good. Not a lot of you know they're selling this as being you know part of the Conjuring, but like Patrick Wilson and uh, Vera Farmiga are pretty much gone after the first 10 minutes and then they're in the last three. Right. It was like, what, two or three shoot days for them, maybe? Yeah, totally. Um, my number's a six. I, what did I say? You said... I'm sorry, you said six. six. I said 6.2. Okay. I said six and a half. All right. So the our number's a 6.2. Is it? 6.2? Yeah. Sure. That works. Um, it's a 68% on the tomato meter. And this came out on Wednesday. So you yes. can go and see it whenever, wherever. Indeed. It is It is in theaters now. In, in broad daylight, I in, recommend. Enjoy, won't you? <laughs> 
Thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and uh, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. It's where we do our TV recaps and movie news and trailer reviews and uh, the occasional review of an old movie that uh, Patreon uh, members get to pick. So if you've already joined us, we appreciate it. Thank you for that. And if you haven't, uh, go look and maybe you'll want to be part of our fun time club. Catch you next time. Bye.